Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 23 of the Cuckoo Attack. I am Chad Hembrock. With me, as always, Patrick Hughes here. And we've got a bunch of news that's come out since our last podcast that we're going to jump into. Pretty much a uh, direct from everyone. Everybody. Everyone wants to do a direct these days. Yeah, after Nintendo's, <laughs> like, you know, direct that was so good. <laughs> everyone decided to uh to see what they could uh win over the people of the internet with <laughs> and your your viewpoint of the nintendo direct may have improved or deteriorated based off what <laughs> followed <laughs> so uh with that said we'll try to get through this quick we have a lot to talk about and uh it's kind of late so um <laughs> let's just get going um first as always what have you been playing patrick Oh, we've been playing a lot of games here. Um, some games that we've both been playing, uh, which we kind of forgot to mention on the last uh, podcast, but Nintendo dropped some more uh, NES and Super Nintendo games. Um, one of which, which is probably the one we should, the only one really worth mentioning, I think, <laughs> is, is Fire and Ice. Yeah, Fire and Ice is great. That, that's a game, uh, one of my buddies that I met <clears throat> when I collected like a bunch of nes stuff and super nes games i used to run around to like flea markets and local game shops he he turned me on to that game he's like you gotta check it out and um immediately fell in love with it and i've owned it twice it's a pretty expensive cart cart only is about 150 and up um i think i sold my last one for like 120 to a buddy locally um <laughs> but yeah it's pretty it's a pretty rare game it was a late a late release nes game but uh it's the sequel to solomon's key yeah yeah which is like another puzzle game although in that one you like move around and jump and stuff this one's much more like more puzzle focused as in you have a very <laughs> limited move set correct um, yeah yeah which i like i dig and like the art is surprisingly really good too, which I guess makes sense since it's like end of life NES. Like they fully took advantage of like the capabilities. Yeah, how good it can look. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I actually I like Fire and Ice better than Solomon's Key. Mm -hmm. um, I've 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 played like through the fourth or fifth level of Fire and Ice like like all time <laughs> not not so much recently <laughs> i think i'm on like level three right now but uh um, I, I think i just got past world three yeah, i'm okay. on world four i think is that the world that starts introducing pipes now and i'm like going through pipes okay. in the levels which yeah is, yeah but like solomon's key like when i when i i've seen that game everywhere and that's a pretty cheap nes game i think you could get it well when i was still buying stuff you could get it for like five to ten bucks um the first game but um, I, I definitely didn't find it as fun. <laughs> and, but regardless, it's still like, I don't know. I, those puzzle games are awesome. So Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you like puzzle games, this, this is definitely a game worth checking out, especially since it's free on Switch Online. Like, do yourself a favor. Give it a go. Yeah. It, you'll, you'll get the concept very quickly. And it's very interesting. Like, because it tells you everything you need to do right off the bat and then like just expands off that concept the whole rest of the game it's so cool yeah so definitely check it out i think i i hope they continue to do more stuff like this releasing these games that are like expensive and like less known mm -hmm. um it oh, just... where's earthbound <laughs> yeah <laughs> well earthbound's well known and expensive <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's got that's like a 200 hundred dollar cartridge still it's crazy um <laughs> But yeah, I mean, you know, I'm hoping they'll do like Little Samson would be awesome. Um, I don't know if that'll ever make it out there, but um, that's a really good game. But yeah, it's like a fifteen hundred dollar NES cartridge, so um, it'd be cool to see more releases like that. So, but that's yeah. I think that's Taito. So 
or okay. Tato or Taito, whatever the hell it is. But, um, but anyway, yeah, I think that was really cool that they released that out there. So yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we've also played with uh, some of the free PS Plus March games that came out. Yes, uh, which we will mention a little more <laughs> later uh, yeah. what those free games are. But one of them that we both jumped into, yeah, Final we... Fantasy VII Remake. <clears throat> yeah, so, like, I was never really, like, pressed about getting it because, uh, one, I didn't have a PS4. <laughs> so it was <laughs> like, I'll play it eventually, whatever. I mean, it is the only Final Fantasy game I've ever played the whole way through. Um so it was intriguing in that sense, but at the same time, it's like, well, I've already played it, and it's it was such a grind. I remember Dude. playing the Dude. hell out of it. Dude. But jumping into it, I mean, me and you played it. Um, oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> it was it was a lot of fun. I mean, it was definitely fun running around. Um, there's you say you've played it before. You played this, and it... <laughs> oh yeah, it's completely different. Obviously, it's completely just like everything you imagined in your head playing the original it's like this game here <laughs> yeah it's it's really cool i mean there's, there's still some things that like it's tough for me just because like i'm horrible with like health management and item management mm -hmm. and stuff like that so there's like that first boss like almost wrecked me <laughs> so, but i think that first night we played I've, I've only played it the, the one night we played and we we got to like chapter three yeah. I think it's like that's as and far I think as the I first got. two chapters are the bombing mission. So, yeah. yeah, so that's pretty much where I stopped. I just haven't had a chance to do that since I've been playing the game of life. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> been, been really busy lately, but, um, but yeah, I know you've, you've gone into it pretty deep. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm on like chapter 16 or 17 now. I don't nice. know how many chapters there are in the game, but. Did you say you're at the point where it tells you to finish up before you continue? I I went a little bit past that now. Okay. I played a little more tonight. Uh, I, I just did the section in the game. I, I'm not sure if you remember this from playing the original, where you are like infiltrating Shinra and you climb up 59 floors of the staircase, and you actually have to like watch them climb all the stairs. I don't remember the whole way up. Yeah, I really do not remember much of that okay. game. Like, like it I told so you good. when we started, I didn't even re I didn't even remember that it was about like climate change. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> anything like totally forgot but then like things started coming back as i was playing it like okay i remember yeah. this i remember him jumping off the train i remember like that whole all the action that happens in like you know the first reactor or whatever area like yeah. i remember watching all of that in the ps1 graphics and I, like that all <laughs> that's very fresh in my head but um but yeah the actual story and stuff like nope yeah <laughs> like i totally forgot just how absurdly silly this entire game is like i remember it being like i thought a very serious game with like some silly moments in between but it's it's the complete opposite this game is just like so absurd but i love it <laughs> and what was the uh what he, you discovered that wedge the voice of wedge is the oh, yeah uh, the dude so the, the voice Breaking the voice Bad. of wedge the like <laughs> chubby member of the avalanche team uh he is the voice of in breaking bad uh, what's his name badger, badger. yeah badger. that's what he said yeah. yesterday <laughs> and it's it fits so perfectly and once you like make that connection you're like oh my gosh it is it's so good yeah <laughs> so yeah, the voice acting is like perfect in that game and like the music oh my gosh is so good and just every single boss fight like that rush you felt from that first boss fight in the bombing rush like all the bosses feel that epic yeah. it's so good the rush for me was like oh shit, i'm gonna die <laughs> that was the rush <laughs> i'll like, give you a little tip which took me because i had the same problem you did with that first bombing mission like i almost used every item i had because i just didn't yep. <laughs> yeah <laughs> i was like every but, item uh, was gone and i was like thank god i have magic that can heal <laughs> yeah but you, you you like i think you might have noticed when you were playing you're like why can't i like use magic or use an item right now like it's all grayed out and stuff mm -hmm. uh you have to pay attention to those two little blue bars by your health meter the atb gauge is what it's called mm -hmm. and as you attack that fills up and once one of them's filled up that's when you can use magic or an item gotcha. so you kind of have to like you get in a groove as you're playing like battles, like watching your party members, like, all right, that person's filled up. They can heal if I need to. And like trying to make sure someone is like always like 
equipped to help you. Gotcha. Kind of, kind of reminded me of like Chrono Trigger in a way, like where you're kind of managing all the gauges and stuff. So I think yeah. what, once you play a little more, it gets okay. really satisfying. Yeah, Chrono Trigger's a little easier though because it's all static. <laughs> <laughs> True. There's, there's a it, lot going on on the screen. And right? I typically, you know, I prefer, like, I think it's awesome to, like, finally play, you know, a RPG that's action based. Like, oh my gosh, I like, can't go like, back. Like, real time <laughs> battling, not just, like, yes. menu turn based selection. Like, but, but I, I, I think love the Chrono best Trigger. part. <laughs> The best part is just no more random battles. Like yeah. that makes this game infinitely better. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. That that was so frustrating, especially with the load times on the PS One. But um, yeah, I'm definitely I, I definitely want to get back into it. I just haven't really had the chance to do it, and yeah. had some other I stuff I've been playing. Part and... part of that reason you didn't do it was because <laughs> yeah. So so the next game was. Uh, so we, we talked about it last episode, how Patrick and I kind of went on a rampage, a competitive rampage for speedrunning Astro's Playroom. Well, the other I, day... I, I was throwing in the white flag at that point last podcast. Like, I, I conceded Chad could have, what was it, six out of the eight records? Yeah, I took six of the eight records, and then... That was like weeks ago, and Patrick never touched it again. And then the other day, he's playing Final Fantasy VII, and I was like, you know what? I kind of want to play Astro. And then, then next thing you know, I see he's playing Astro. <laughs> and then and you're like, why not? I haven't touched this in two months. And then I proceed to beat one record. Chad's like, oh darn it. And then a few days later, he signs on. I have now took seven out of the eight records. Well, let's be real, but that was last night. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I turn on my PS5 and I get alerted with, you know, you get your record back, reclaim on these four runs, and I'm like, Are you serious? Yeah. So, so instead How do you of like that feeling, Chad? instead huh? of firing up Final Fantasy VII Remake, I fired up Astro's Playroom from 9:30 until 12:30 last night for another three hours of running the same 40 second run over and over again. <laughs> you did two courses. I did two got courses. One of the records back. Got one back. Couldn't get the other one. Um, I got within <laughs> point. I got within point seven or eight. I think you were point, point eight. Oh, point oh eight. Because you point were oh eight. Yeah. Yeah. Because you oh you were like seconds. You were like forty three point oh eight, and I was forty three point one six or something like that. It was yep. absurd. <laughs> And I played a couple more times after you signed off last night too, and I and I got 19 again, but I never got, I couldn't get lower. I never got back to the 16 again. So I don't know. We'll see. Um, it was all part of my master plan. Yeah. Wait two months and Chad gets rusty, <laughs> and then has a significant life event that he can't play and reclaim. <laughs> Pretty much. So uh, we we also played with your brother. We played a. Uh, left for dead last stand map that was released yeah yeah it's crazy that they're like it was and then left for dead 2 to be specific yeah uh, but it, that map was based off the original left for dead and the fact that they are like still adding stuff to this game that's like how many years old i don't even know <laughs> well because they know they're gonna lose all their fan base when that that stellar back for blood game <laughs> comes out Number one pick fantasy critic update. <laughs> <laughs> but um but yeah, no, that was that was a lot of fun. And then uh that kind of transitioned into um uh you and your brother try to do a, a Baba is you puzzle yeah, every we, we time. Kind of you been getting into, each time we hang out, we try to do at least like one puzzle of Baba is you because you never know how long those puzzles can take. And so we're <laughs> hoping to slowly chip away at that yeah so i got sucked into that too so um i actually played a little bit of that um within the last couple weeks myself just kind of going through some of it because like, i never finished the game i only got to like the third <laughs> who, world who, maybe who has finished the game yeah well just in general like i i only got to like the third world and like you know i, I tried to just unlock some stuff and when i got stuck i just youtube did i was like i can't do this it's so hard yeah. but like i can do like the first three or four of each world by myself but then after that it's just like yeah when you start getting them like where you're moving two objects at the same time and you've got to move in a pattern to set it up correctly that's when my brain just breaks so part of my problem with that game is i'm sometimes just 
too stubborn because <laughs> yeah. like you should be able to beat any puzzle at any time but at the same token i i keep in my mindset that they don't teach you all the concepts all at once and sometimes i get stuck on a puzzle when if i probably like tried to go somewhere else i learned a concept i need yeah like the so, one that we couldn't beat and i was like yeah. dude just look it up and then we did and yeah and it was like we never would have tried that <laughs> and i'm betting maybe somewhere there might be another puzzle that teaches you that but yeah i was we were so stubborn like there's gotta be an answer here <laughs> yeah that's pretty crazy so so that's that's pretty much been it um i think that the both of us have played together um, yeah yeah or just in general um I've been pretty busy with uh, my virtual pinball machine. Um, I've I've spent a lot of time getting that wired up. Um, well, it's been wired up, but I, I've got it running from my gaming PC now, which is where I'm sitting. And then it's like two machines over. So um, it's actually working really well. Everything's set up really nice. Um, I only have a handful of tables right now on it, but, um, this past week I got an audio amplifier and actually have like the subwoofer and the speakers running now. <laughs> and, uh, I've been hearing some of those sound effects occasionally. It sounds really good, dude. Like the... ghost bustings and guardians of the galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> that was playing through the TV the last time you heard it, but now it actually okay. has like depth to it. Cause there's a subwoofer and you know, it's got the, the tweeters up in the, uh, the back box and stuff. So it, it sounds really good and um the next thing so i still need to like solder the wires in because like right now they're just kind of like i just kind of twisted them on to make sure it worked and um i need to like figure out my placement for all this stuff and then get it mounted and then wire it up you know pretty and um mm -hmm. the next thing i want to do is there's this thing called exciter speakers that like basically take any flat or solid surface and it like vibrates against it to make it a speaker and what you can do what people have done in virtual pinball is they've actually created scripts where the ball noises and the flippers will vibrate off the wood of the cabinet to give you that that force feedback using sound instead of using like mechanical oh, objects cool. so and everyone says it's really good and it's pretty cheap to do so um i'm definitely down for giving it a try with like yeah. using like a, <laughs> the, the only requirement is like um for every set of speakers you use you have to use its own um amplifier that then plugs into it has to be like a 7.1 sound card because you're essentially each channel is going to drive like like your center channel is going to drive the flipper noises the um, rear surround sound is going to drive the, the ball guide. So you'll actually like feel the ball rolling as it goes through the table and stuff. So I've been <laughs> reading about it and it sounds really cool. And, um, I, I yeah. think it's gonna like for, for something that's like all digital. That's crazy. Yeah, it's really cool. So, and people like people swear by it. They say it's really good. So, um, I think it's, it's like, you can do it for like less than a hundred bucks. So I'm definitely down for, for trying it out. But yeah, I use that stimulus money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely down for checking it out. So that's been like my main thing. Like even tonight to record, I was like, should we record or should I mess with my pinball machine? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's definitely cool. Like it's much better than the one that I made like back in 2013. Um, that one was like my first attempt. And while it was fun, as soon as I got that one playable, I stopped doing any other work on it. Like I just didn't <laughs> care. The back box was like, it didn't it didn't like match the scale of the rest of the machine i didn't have like the speakers were just computer speakers that i jammed down in the box and like <laughs> it was pretty cheap like this this one i built to match my actual pinball machines so it like it looks like it fits the bill like when you look at my row of games so still missing some pieces and stuff but it'll get there i'm taking my time with it so yeah um, that's a fun project uh real quick for me as well i played i tried to play the messenger again I got stuck on that bottom pole boss, <laughs> which then led you to say, how are you any good at Ninja Gaiden if you can't be good at this? And then I fired up Ninja Gaiden on Switch Online, streamed it to you and showed you that I could make it to the final boss of Ninja Gaiden he did. in a single sitting. He did. <laughs> so... <laughs> He was able to get to that final level in like an hour. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, so I did that. Which still begs the question, how is he 
<laughs> not able to handle the messenger, but like he proved he can handle Ninja Gaiden. Well, I played the messenger. I was like pretty good at it when it first came out, and then I just like completely stopped. And then the DLC came out, and then I just my all my skill was gone through that. <laughs> so I'm sure I can do it. I just need to play it more. But I feel like I need to like play it from the beginning again just to kind of like master the, the controls. Yeah, sometimes that happens in games. Yeah, and then that same night, flipping through some uh, NES games on Nintendo Switch Online. Well, actually, Famicom games. I went on the Japanese one, and I saw this game. It was called like gun con or gun something and i was like what is this and i loaded it up and i was like this game's really cool like did they ever make this in <laughs> in you know for ntsc like for the american region and uh i google it real quick and it's vice project doom a game that i've owned like three times on nes and never <laughs> played it because i'm an idiot and everyone's told me that game's awesome and that game is really fun <laughs> Yeah. It starts off with like it was weird because it, it starts like as like a top down like driving game, kind of like spy game, hunter, and all of a sudden it goes ninja guide, and you're like, what the yeah, heck? Yeah, the, the game was really fun. Um, I, I I should get back into playing that more, but yeah, I've had so many people tell me that game was great. It was actually like there used to be a shop here, and the guy there was like, dude, Chad, you got to get Vice Project Doom. You'll love it. And I did. I got it like a couple times because <laughs> I kept getting it and then I'd like offload my collection and then I'd be like, oh, I got to get Vice Project Doom again. And I get it and I just never played it because I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> but check it out if you haven't. It's really good. It's on Nintendo Switch Online. Um, and, and if you want to like collect it, it's like a, I think last time it was like a 30 to $40 NES game. But it was oh. definitely fun and I should have played it more. So, <laughs> but what have you been playing uh yeah so i think last time i mentioned i finished bowser's fury and i was playing through mario 3d world so i did finish mario 3d world um 100 it with mario even beating that champion's road you yeah. got to witness yeah, that that's cool yeah it though that, that level is like impossible if you don't get a power up beforehand though it's watching, like so hard. watching you play it made me want to get that game because it was like it looks fun like <laughs> as just as frustrating as that level is i just kind of had i was kind of getting that itch to play like uh, a mario platform challenge <laughs> yeah i had fun though. it was fun to play the whole game and i was like starting to play through the whole game with the rest of the characters like the super 100 percent it but I kind of lost steam on that because it's a lot of levels to play through. I think it's because you saw online that somebody else did it, and it and I saw someone else and did it, it too. And it did yeah. not unlock Super Mario it Galaxy did not Two. Unlock. <laughs> <laughs> it was just half my motivation so I could post that joke, <laughs> but someone else beat it before me. So, so you're able to post that joke then? <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, but we'll see. It was still fun. Yeah. I might pick it up here and there. Um, uh, another game I finished, I just kind of want to mention because I played through the whole game. Uh, it's a little puzzle game called Down in Bermuda. Uh, it's kind of like a weird puzzle slash Where's Waldo game <laughs> where you're like on these little islands that you like rotate and you like poke around at stuff and you're trying to find things to get off the island to the next island. Mm. Um, so it was a pretty fun game, but probably a little overpriced for like how short it is because it was only a couple hours and then you're done um but like artistically the style is really cool and it was very very chill game so i enjoyed it um check it out if it ever is like super cheap on sale i'd say it's worth it then cool. um where's waldo i immediately think of hidden in time and i'm like ooh, <laughs> <laughs> that that game was awesome yeah, not, not, not quite to that extent, like not like millions of characters on the screen, but you're still like searching and like rotating the environment to find like these little star bits and stuff. And so it's kind of that like find aspect that I say, where's Waldo? Cool. Um, that's all the bo that's always the bonus part of where's Waldo books. At like the very end of the book, it has like the checklist of like find yeah. a trumpet, find a book, find a whistle and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I always love doing that at the end. Yeah. It's really cool with this because the fact that you like actually rotate the environment. So you're having to like inspect things from all different angles in order to find these hidden objects. It's like Captain so... Toad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, yeah. <laughs> um, And then the last game I will mention 
I've still been playing this. I just haven't been really talking about it with the podcast because it's more or less the same. But I will I will toot my horn a little bit. I have now reached a hundred days of ring fit exercising. So because because I don't exercise every day with the game, but I I strive for like four days, maybe a week at least, give or take. So do you feel that's why I'm just hitting the hundred day mark now. Do you feel super and powerful? I mean, I feel. I, feel toned <laughs> don't think you'll see any like six pack yet on me but um. <laughs> i've got two pizzas on me right now so. <laughs> let me let me say like my physique is impressive for someone who just sits all day and plays video games and eats pizza so like marine fit is doing its job there you go for living that lifestyle there you go <laughs> <laughs> and like a hundred days in and the game is still going it's uh like 40 hours in it's impressive you're still enjoying it still enjoying it there you go still like a new story every day i play so that's it's cool that's cool man yeah all right well but that should do it for our playlist yeah. um how far are we into recording or should we take a break 25 minutes all right quick break and then We'll try to zoom through the rest of this. All right. back with fantasy critics update <laughs> da, 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 da. Yeah. all right so, so take it away Kamesh. <laughs> so let's see what is new in the standing since last recording uh i believe only one other game has released since then which is for right games my company here and that was bravely default 2 netting me another eight points I was kind of a little disappointed. I was hoping that would net me a little more points, but, you know, a game's a game. I'll take it. <laughs> so that puts me at a total of 32 points now, ahead of objectionable content of our cheap friends to dish, who is still at 16. <laughs> and Edgy Picks with Chad, uh, you're still waiting for anything oh. to release. In fact, one of your games isn't even going to release this year, so you're going to have to replace that. Gran Turismo 7. Yeah. Not coming out this it's year. a little disappointing. Um, I honestly am... I didn't even know that <laughs> until tonight, so... Uh, <laughs> so that's good. That's that's good that I uh, was yeah. able to drop it, at least. Well, at least no one counterpicked it. That's true. Yeah. So you have room to fill it in. Oh, show. Although you spent quite a bit of your fortune on one pick up here, which was with the recent Nintendo Direct. You you snagged it from me, because I, I think I put in six dollars <laughs> thinking like that might be enough. I put no, like Chad really wanted something this. like that. <laughs> yes, you're you're at like fifty four bucks now. Yeah, I'm pretty broke. So drops. But you got it. You got Mario Golf Super Rush. Yeah. <laughs> which I think was a good pick. I think that will definitely net you some points. I love golf games, and, and I'll be I'll be picking that up day one. Yeah, <laughs> so I'll definitely pick that up. The only uh, uh, person to pick up some games since last we talked was objectionable content. He's almost filled out his entire roster. I didn't even know that. Picking up four <laughs> games, he picked up Neo: The World Ends with You, uh, Monster Hunter Stories Two: Wings of Ruin. So he's got all of Monster Hunter now. <laughs> Balan Wonderworld. That was a uh, pick I thought, because I don't know. That might come back to bite him. <laughs> <laughs> and then Solar Ash, which is filling up more of his PlayStation all things. <laughs> yeah. So he's got one spot left, unless something unless something left. gets uh, canceled. The crazy part is he still has $94 to bet for this last game, <laughs> so... <laughs> If he wants it, he could probably have it. Yeah. 
uh, my one word of warning I'll give to you, Sadish, is you might want to save at least a few dollars, though, just in case one of your games does not release and you need money to replace it. You don't want to, you, you gotta have at least one dollar per bid. So. Yeah, he's cheap enough that he'll, he'll have enough money. <laughs> <laughs> He'll probably just bid one dollar for this last game and be like, "Hey guys, can I get like points for my leftover of currency?" And then no, it's <laughs> not, not how this works. <laughs> I, I do like that he counterpicked my new Pokemon Snap, and I'm hoping that 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 reviews well next next month. So, yeah. hey, the more I see of that game, the more excited it I am. It looks good. So. It looks good. Yeah. So. Which, which we'll get to talk about a little bit in this because there was Pokemon news that we have not covered. Yeah. So. But that should do it for our Fantasy Critics update. That was pretty quick. Yeah. yeah. Three minutes. Good, I like All it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... Speaking of uh, Sedition, his all things Sony, Sony had a state of play that came out. Um, yeah, that's the first, the first of 2021 here. Yeah, and it was, it was kind of like out of nowhere, but I was kind of like excited, hoping that we'd hear something, especially as a, as a new member of the PlayStation family, this, this gen. Yes. Um, definitely down to play more stuff um, on this, so... So did anything excite you? <laughs> no. <laughs> and that was the sad part. Like, so uh, so real quick, one thing that like wasn't on this that I would have been like, oh, okay, cool. Like, all right. So like Crash 4. Okay, that's cool. That's out. But they're talking about it like getting an exclusive PS5 version. Like, okay, whatever. Yeah, like, whatever. Like, that's cool. Whatever. But like Tony Hawk 1 and 2 is getting the same thing and that wasn't part of this. Which is kind of weird. Yeah, to me. there were some weird missions with that. Like, yeah. I felt like that was kind of weird because, like, to me, I think Tony Hawk is like PlayStation. Like that's it, and I'll probably I'll probably pick that up for for PS5 just because that's how I always played that game was on PlayStation. <laughs> just feels right. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, other than that, like when they showed Final Fantasy, so they they showed some Final Fantasy footage, and I got excited for it being the you know part two <laughs> even though like i hadn't had part one yet i was like okay at least part two is cool and they're able to crank them out a little faster than i thought they were going to that wasn't the case so um <laughs> yeah nothing nothing really came out and nothing nothing for yeah. me personally i'll be honest there, there wasn't really much to be excited about in this i think the only new game that they showed was this game called saifu which was this like it's like a Kinda samurai guy, right? Samurai, like Kill Billish. I don't know, just like slashing enemies and stuff. Um, it looks cool. It had style, but it was also like, so, like, what is this? <laughs> and then it was over. So yeah. Um, but yeah, they showed more of Returnal, which I have not been into that. What they've shown, so it didn't excite me. Still, uh, then they showed Knockout City, which from that Nintendo Direct, I was like why this was like the worst game of that direct don't, i don't see more of this disappointment so I, um, i've heard more about that game and it's like it's dodgeball basically it's, it's, it's like what it is yeah. but like it's fine the the trailer they used for it was so bad <laughs> like it i thought it was gonna be like Fortnite, and it was like yeah. just because the way they showed it and it was like this, this weird like dodgeball like game. i don't i don't have a problem with the game concept it's just the presentation it's seems poor. so yeah. weird how yeah <laughs> it like doesn't match what the tone yeah. of the game that that's that's what i don't know I, yeah um but what else did they show uh solar ash which is uh kind of weird indie like hopping around sci-fi-ish game i don't know it looks okay uh five nights at freddy's i'm like okay i'm not sure if, why that's so popular but i guess people play it so never I've never <laughs> played those games i only know the like yeah the the logo or whatever the mascot yeah. it's, it's like a jump scare series right something like that yeah. like maybe puzzle-ish game i'm not sure yeah but uh and then they've shown odd world soulstorm for the 42nd time <laughs> um <laughs> i've never been into the odd world games they just don't do it for me at all i just don't they've advertised this game to death for years like please release so they can stop advertising this <laughs> and it's like the same thing every time like nothing seems like 
I get it. I get it. I get it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they did show what I was happy to see more Kina. Kena, Kina, I'm not sure how it's pronounced. Bridge of Spirits, uh, which looks awesome. Um, and, I mean, it didn't really show much new about it, although we have a release date now, which is awesome. It comes out in August. So, um, yeah, I was also surprised. I didn't realize that game is being priced, I think, only as a 50 or $40 game, like $40 for PlayStation 4, $50 for PS5. So, like, kudos to them for, like, pricing what they think the adventure is going to be size-wise. I don't know. <laughs> like, they could have easily gotten away p pricing at full price, but I feel like that's very honest, what they're doing. Yeah. And it looks gorgeous, so I'm very excited for that. Uh, showed more of Deathloop, more of the same, and then they finished, as you said, with Final Fantasy VII Remake, but not Part Two, but a, like, slight expansion dlc and talking about the ps5 upgrades yeah um and apparently there was a post show which i did not realize i only discovered these this additional news like days after the fact but they're doing so much more final fantasy 7 stuff um they're turning this into like the new kingdom hearts it's kind of crazy <laughs> so they've got the final fantasy remake for mobile right <laughs> For mobile, which I think is what they call uh, first soldier. Or... First soldier, I think. Yeah. And then they had the... which it looks it looks more like a traditional like Final Fantasy, not like the this action RPG, but more like the, your turn based kind of like the original. Yeah. But they're adding like illustrations and higher resolution kind of look to it, so it looks kind of cool in that sense. Um, and then yes, the other one was uh, Ever Crisis, which is that's the battle royale, right? Battle fancy <laughs> battle royale. Yeah, I don't, I don't They're get like, it. Like what? But <laughs> okay. I mean, maybe this is also mobile. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of curious if Final Fantasy VII First Soldier will end up being the Final Fantasy remake that the Switch that... gets. That the Switch gets, yeah. <laughs> that is, like, can run on the Switch. <laughs> yeah. It'd be uh, interesting if that ends up being the case. Um, but speaking of Final Fantasy, a few days after that Direct, they announced what the free PlayStation Plus games for March 2021 was, and lo and behold... Final Fantasy VII Remake is one of those free games. Yeah, the best part about that was that I texted you, like, the day before or that day and was like, hey, the rumor is Final Fantasy VII Remake is going to be the free game this month. No way. There's no oh, way no. that's happening. And then, <laughs> yeah, and then like, right. two hours later, you're like, dude. And I'm like, it's real, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. That was, it was crazy. It was pretty it's crazy. This, this game hasn't even come out, like, so, a year yet yeah. and like it's gotta be like one of the hottest talked about games still for yeah um, for sure I mean I, I almost picked it up on like Black Friday for 35 bucks because I was like 35 bucks isn't bad I'll grab it and yeah. I'm glad I didn't <laughs> so. like granted I will probably still pick it up in the inevitable like collection like part one part two bundle that they released for PS5 yeah um I guess that's the one caveat we should mention with this uh, free Final Fantasy VII Remake. It's a PS4 edition, and it's not eligible to be upgraded to the PS5 edition that they advertise, which comes out, I think they said, in May. Not for free. Not for, not free. for free, but it did It did look like there was an option to upgrade it for 20 bucks. I think it's what yeah, I so saw somewhere in the uh, when I was looking at the PlayStation. I'm not entirely store. certain how that will work. I guess we'll find closer once like it actually is available. Yeah. Um, for net, for yeah, sure. I'm pretty sure if you go to like the additional content for that game being a plus game, it it said like upgrade to digital deluxe version for twenty like you know twenty bucks. Okay. Which then if you do that, then I think you get the free upgrade. Cool. But it, yeah, they, they're not going to give you that for free. But yeah. But I don't like but, how much but... better can it look? Like the game looks yeah, yeah. gorgeous. Given the choice of like, <laughs> like better fog effects and like 
a free game. I'm gonna go over the free game. Yeah, like it's <laughs> yeah. I, I don't get how like could be wrong, I love power and like I have like a pretty powerful graphics card on my computer, I get it, but like you get to that point, games are only gonna look so good. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, like I, I, I do notice, like, at times playing this, like, there are definitely moments where the textures, like, especially when you get, like, really close to, like, crawling on the wall or, like, opening the door, like, you're like, there's, like, no detail on this. What the heck happened? But, like, still better than it's Cyberpunk. easily ignored by the fact of how beautiful the rest of the world looks. It's like, yeah. I can... I can ignore a door to, like, look at all of this. Yeah. <laughs> um... But yeah, uh, what were the other free games that they had? Uh, so there's Farpoint, which that's that's VR, right? Yeah, that's a VR one, which I will have to try at some point. I'm once I get off this uh, hype that is Final Fantasy, um, <laughs> but it looks cool, and I think you can actually play with like a normal controller, which means that I could actually try it now because I only have the the normal uh, controller. I don't have those move controllers, gotcha. so. Um, but yeah, that looks cool, especially for like a first-person shooter VR game. I'm intrigued. Um, well, let me know if it. They also, let me know if it makes you sick. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm most <laughs> curious about because I do. I'm kind of like slowly finding my limits uh, as to what I can handle in VR. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, you got to play some. Uh, oh, plus you can also try uh, Resident Evil Seven too now that you have that for free, and then um. Well, that's true. And uh, oh god, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just trying to. I'm <laughs> curious because like after playing Half Life Alex in VR for like you know 20 hours or however long I played that game for, um, it was pretty awesome. But like, oh, uh, but in VR, I don't know. It's the way like. It's the way first person shooter should be, but until like until like I'm the environment moves about, with like, you. The spookiness aspect of it. Like I don't know. Oh, Resident I Evil, I completely immerse myself. Uh, I, I meant just more along the lines of like playing a first person shooter how in VR. It functions, and how, yeah, yeah. how it feels so but But yeah, after playing that Resident Evil 8 demo, I'm like, oh god. Do I wanna like immerse myself in a VR helmet of that? No, <laughs> F no. I gotta play that demo still. I hope it's still available. <laughs> Uh, but all right, yeah. There's another game. Was it Maquette? Maquette. It kind of reminded me of the uh, yeah. What's that uh, subliminal like resizing shape? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of options concept of a puzzle okay. game. I haven't tried so, it. I just saw that, and then I've not either. There was but... a remnant from the ashes. Ashes. Yeah. Can't speak. <laughs> I don't know as much about that game. I, I feel like I remember hearing it, it was like Dark Soulish. I'm not sure. Yeah, so I'm not as. And I think they still have for PS5 members the Destruction Derby All Stars is still free. I, th okay. I think, but. Um, I know that was February. I'm not sure how long if they kept it I or not. I thought but... it was still there when I claimed all these. I'm pretty sure okay. it was still on the list, but since I already claimed it, I didn't click on it, and I don't even think I played it after I claimed it. <laughs> Gotcha. But no reason not to claim a free game. Yeah. Speaking of free games, so many free games. Yeah. So Sony is uh, cranking They're it up. Done. You can get Ratchet and Clank <laughs> right now for free. No, that's not the new one. That's the the one that came out. Uh, PS4. PS4 a couple years yes. ago. The part of their reboot, and this is all part of Sony's uh, Play at Home uh, 2021 initiative to don't get sick. <laughs> Please let's stop. Yeah. Stop going out. <laughs> I'm for it. <laughs> free games. Ten free games. Free, yeah. That was just the first one. Yeah. The rest of them start becoming available March twenty fifth through April nineteenth. Yeah, so that's cool. And um what is it? What's that one called? Abzu? Uh, Abzu, Abzu is which, awesome. yeah, you've told me it's really good. And I actually have it. Yeah, it's it's from the well it's not the same creators i think they changed studio names that, that now it's giant squid but from the people who made like flower and journey um so those very kind of like atmospheric exploration games not so good journey, so pretty right? not that already, journey that you we already had that episode <laughs> yes love it anyway um although the story beats of abzu are very similar to journey so if you like one it's like pretty similar to the other gotcha yeah it's just underwater well, then they've uh, entered the Gungeon, um, mm -hmm. Res Infinite, which I've heard is really good. 
Yeah, I played a little bit of that on PSVR. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, I've heard it's really, really Just like cool. arcadey music. It's like awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I've heard it's really good. And I, I've had a couple friends tell me I need to play it, but I didn't have PS4, so. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, there's Subnautica, which I've never played either. And... Yeah, I think that's like a survival crafting in the ocean game. Like you crash in this mysterious underwater planet and you have to like craft your way and escape. So cool. And then the one I was excited for was The Witness because you've told me to play that a bunch of times. And oh, yeah, I have just never picked I, it up. So it's a that is a particular love hate game for me. The hate being the ending, but the love being one of the most amazing puzzle games you will ever play. <laughs> so if you can ignore the ending, yes, absolutely play this game. Enjoy the journey rather than the destination. <laughs> yeah, so I'm looking forward to playing that. And then uh, also like the, the PSVR exclusives, Astro's Bot Rescue Mission. Like I'm so... Just, just claim it. I, and I just have to be claim ready it, yeah. to love so it I can someday. either steal your your PSVR or if I eventually end up getting one, I want to play that. I've heard Moss is fun. Um, that's a cool I game. have Thumper. Yeah. I have Thumper in VR on my Oculus, um, and that's a fun game in VR. It's really cool. It'll. I'm I'm pretty curious, yeah, how to because I got it on. I think I was on Switch, so uh -oh. and I'm curious what the VR experience would be like. Yeah. It'd probably be kind of terrifying. I, I have I it on Oculus, and it's it's really <laughs> cool, dude. Like, it kind of like it'll make you start sweating a little bit if you get into it because you're just like, you know, moving around. Do 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 do. Like, I just remember be... like when you get towards like the end of the stage and it's the big like, all of a sudden like a big roller coaster out. like you're climbing up this really tall hill and then yeah you come over the cusp and that huge face like stares yeah, at it's you. pretty cool i mean like honestly it's just like you're just immersed in the world but it's still the same game like your perspective doesn't change it's still like you're just behind the car and everything's around you it's just like you're standing in the room with it all that might it's, help it's really cool like, like i feel like the more you can immerse yourself the better you might do with the yeah, gameplay it's, it's really cool I, I i really enjoyed it um i didn't i didn't play an, enough of it but I, I did play a decent amount of it it's it's, cool. it's definitely cool so you'll you'll definitely have to check that out once you get your once you get your copy available yeah um and it, in april they're going to be releasing uh horizon zero dawn complete edition yes this thing right this here that i just bought for 10 bucks <laughs> and played it for like an hour and a half and decided that it's not for me because everyone that compared it to breath of the wild was completely wrong <laughs> <laughs> game felt nothing like breath of the wild <laughs> but uh. maybe that's just my fault for going into it expecting it to be a breath of the wild like experience no. and it's it's definitely it's not. not definitely the, not. the camera was too close for my liking and it just just felt weird it didn't feel right <laughs> but it's free now so that's cool um if i hadn't have gotten it for will i play it now for free that is the question <laughs> give it a try i mean you 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 like, watched, watched me play it. and you kind of felt the same I don't know. <laughs> yeah so i don't know i feel like it will still be on my back burner compared to all these other games that i'd rather play yeah. so <laughs> it's hard to say but I, yeah. i'll you know obviously i already own it so maybe i'll just <laughs> sell my copy of it now for nothing because nobody's gonna want it because it's free <laughs> no. well, well, yeah. hey hey, um, hey the best thing that came out of it was that I got this? I got this red. Got red I got case. the red case. So I could put Spider Man right. in it. So that was actually worth the ten bucks. <laughs> there you go. Nice ten dollar case. That was worth it. That was worth it. <laughs> I'll take it. Uh, and <laughs> um, I guess I should also mention with the Play at Home initiative, they are also giving an extended trial of Funimation, and uh, I'm not sure what the other ones pronounce. Wakanim. Basically, you get an extra 90 days, which would normally be like a two week trial. So you get like three months of this animation uh, streaming channel, which you can stream all these different anime shows like My Hero Academia, Demon Slayer, Attack on Titan, Fruits Basket. So, um, never watched any of this, but. I feel like you'd enjoy Hero Academia. At I've least. heard of that just because uh, I think it used to be yeah. on like Toonami. 
and it would come on like i'd see the commercials for it when i was watching I mean, like, it's not it's not the same like humor of one punch man so or anything good. but <laughs> i love one punch man i can't wait for the next season <laughs> <laughs> But if you get bored, want some <clears throat> new shows to check out, you got three months of quality cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I think I think that covers all the free games. We're, we're not done with Sony yet because they just keep dropping news left and right. <laughs> well, they've got to they've got to compete with uh, with uh, so. Um xbox picking up bethesda and making all their games exclusive so. that's true i forgot to list that here <laughs> but that i mean we, we knew about that yeah. pretty much and that, like had expectations that would be the case yeah so. i mean yeah like As so they spent now. like a billion dollars on that acquisition so they're definitely going to make their money on those exclusive games yeah so. <laughs> but uh just this past week as of we recording uh playstation reveal the new vr controllers which will release next year in 2022 uh i know you're, you're which makes me that. so <laughs> so upset like because they've been using the same stupid playstation move one since playstation 3 yeah so two generations in it's about time they like update their motion controls and they look to be every bit as like up to date at least to current vr controllers yeah, for sure they definitely have that that oculus look to them or like even like the index stuff like that mm-hmm. so um and it's using that uh dual sense technology with the haptic feedback of their current yeah, ps5 controller which i think would be awesome yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be like a game changer yeah so i'm i'm super excited that'll definitely open a lot more possibilities for me checking out vr games yeah it'll probably be uh, really good for like first person shooters to like feel the trigger (laughs) of a gun like actually like give you feedback i wonder if they'll use them like even outside of vr just for like normal games on tv like a motion control yeah Yeah. i mean yeah i mean motion's in the dual sense 5 anyway yeah oh that'd be cool to astrobot to climb the climbing run yeah <laughs> just be like doo, 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 and you got a light it light. has all the haptic feedback so you being able to feel it and like yeah, yeah that'd be really cool if they could patch a little update for yeah, that that'd be sweet or, or make another astro's playroom too. do it i'm down more astro but <laughs> <laughs> speed runs <laughs> They really need to do more Astro, just everything. Yeah. That has been like a new Sony. Yeah, no. Like, Astro, Astro no. is the Mario of PlayStation. It should be. He should be. <laughs> it was awesome. Felt so good. Such a good game. <laughs> but yeah. no, yeah, it, the it, controllers it, look it, great, it, though. I, I'm definitely excited to, to see them. Um, you know, depending on what games are announced for psvr and what they do with it, if they end up releasing a new headset or something like that. Um, yeah, I'm curious if they'll give more news later for a new headset um, yeah like i like having like so i have the oculus but i really haven't touched it since half-life alex and a lot of that is just my my setup is completely changed and you know i don't have the space behind me i used to um mm. but it's um it's kind of a pain to set up because like i have the old oculus that has like sensor bars and like cameras and all sorts of I have to set up to get it to work right. Um, if Sony releases something that's that's quick and easy to like set up, um, I can easily take my PS5 to another room in my house and toss it on so I can play, or or even move it over where I do have space where I'm not you know tied to my desktop PC. Um, yeah. So it's definitely I, I'm I'm interested to see what what they're going to do since they are at least announcing controllers. I'm curious if they're going to do a new headset too, to try to keep up with that, with that um, market. I feel like they might, I'm just not sure if it's going to be like how much more powerful or anything. Um, since they have the current PSVR that works with PS5, I don't know if they're going to want to segregate the market or if they're going to want to like step it up. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, if they ever brought back PlayStation All Stars, Astrobot definitely needs to be a character in that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. 
So. But speaking of PlayStation <laughs> and fighting games, that was my segue. segue right there. Excellent. <laughs> I figured when I looked on the list, I was like, ah. Yes. <laughs> Sony bought Evo. Yeah, that was kind of out of nowhere. Um, <laughs> like Evo being that uh, fighting, like annual competition that they age each year. If you're not familiar, yeah, I, I personally don't really follow that stuff, but I know what it is. Um, mm -hmm. I saw a lot of people were <laughs> off that Sony bought it, um, <laughs> just due to the fact of like if, if everything's Sony exclusive, they feel alienated and all that stuff, but. Um, but then I also saw somebody say like they're not making it platform specific, so um, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens. I, I, I'd say as long as they don't like block certain games from being eligible for this, that's fine. Because obviously one of their biggest like uh, performers each year is Smash Brothers and. Was Smash? Street Fighter. Wasn't there a thing and... with Smash though, like not being a part of Evo originally? I thought there was some issue with that. Like people like didn't take it seriously. I don't know. I think there was some controversy one year between Melee and like the new Smash Brothers. Gotcha. But um because Nintendo really wants to get rid of Melee if they can. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, no. maybe Nintendo was secretly like, "Yeah, Sony, can you can you just buy Evo so that people can shut up about Melee?" Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, dude, discreetly brush it away. <laughs> so Melee has been in Evo since 2007, and then then they did Brawl for two years, and then they did Smash Four, and then now they have Ultimate. So mm -hmm. yeah. It's, and then they have Project M, which is like a, um, that's a, uh, whatchamacallit, that's like a, it's not like a modded, yeah, it's like a, mod, yeah, it's like a modded, um, Smash Brothers thing, but any, anyway, yeah. okay, yeah, I, I, like I said, I don't really follow it, but I, I remember, <laughs> I remember hearing something about Smash and controversy, so. Yeah, I am curious if this means, like, Sony is gonna start, like, trying to like get more rights to fighting series though like didn't they once have exclusive rights to one of the street fighter games was it street fighter 4 um i don't remember because street, street fighter 4 was on it came on pc i know at one point um, okay but i mean tekken was the big tech was it street fighter 4 or 5 i'm not sure i don't remember I, i'm pretty sure one of the street fighters was exclusive to tekken to... is the was always the big sony fighting property and like so yeah tekken was like launch ps1 and then you had tekken 2 and 3 i don't think tekken 4 was on ps1 no, no. yeah please street fighter 5 was a ps4 exclusive okay yeah and the next street fighter 6 won't be exclusive at least what capcom has announced yeah i think that people off and then um <laughs> Yeah, like I could see maybe they're bringing new Tekken in. Like, has well, I mean, I guess there has been a bunch of Tekkens. I haven't, I haven't played Tekken in forever. My favorite Tekken was Tekken Tag on PS2, and then I had Tekken Four as well on PS2. Yeah. And that's or maybe maybe just the fact that Street Fighter Five being exclusive ticked so many people off. Sony is now taking this different route. Fine, if we can't own the game, we'll own the fighting competition. And we'll make that exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, so it, it'll be interesting to see what the heck they're doing with this because it's it's a very this was the like last acquisition anyone saw coming. Yeah. <laughs> you don't really think about like a gaming tournament being purchased by yeah. a gaming company. Like I don't know, I just never thought about that. I've always kind of thought of those like competitions being just kind of like independent, you know, independently ran competitions for whatever, but. Hey, good for them. I'm sure. I'm sure the people that started that made some money off of that. So, <laughs> good for them. <laughs> all right. So, I think that covers all the Sony news, and we are ten minutes from midnight here. We're we gonna be able to finish this. We got it. Do you want to take a quick break and then start it back up for Nintendo exclusive? Because I think everything else we have left is Nintendo. Everything besides Square Enix. All right.
Should we do Square Enix let's real quick? Let's do Square Enix real quick then. Let's just do Square Let's just cover that. I mean, there's not really much to say about yeah, that. Yeah, not really. So Square Enix decided to have their own Direct, which was, okay, sure, everyone can have one. Why not? <laughs> um, honestly, it was pretty much a bore fest, but just to quickly name the games that they talked about, there was Outriders, which I think they droned on for much oh, too dude, long. Oh, dude, like, it was like a, it was like 10 minutes. Yeah. Because I, I skipped it. Like, I, I, I forgot because <laughs> you sent me the link and I caught it late and I... um. So I got I got home and I saw Outriders and I was like, okay, this is like Destiny, okay, and I just kind of like, like yeah. I just kind of skipped through it and I was like, it's still going, holy. <laughs> and then I I got like ten minute the ten minute mark and I saw their logo pop up again. I was like, oh my god, and then I know, yeah. So yeah, so it's pretty much <laughs> Destiny, but like you're supposed to always like be attacking, and I don't know, it seems so bland. So next, yeah. um, <laughs> um, so. They talked a little bit. Yeah, yeah Tomb Raider ahead. 25th anniversary I thought was cool because like I didn't even realize that it's been 25 years since I first played that game on PS1. And I yeah. actually had it on Saturn. <laughs> I had it on Sega Saturn back uh, in the day. Um, but I remember the first time I ever played it was on the, uh, the Sony... It was called like Sony Bootleg Sampler. It was like a little demo disc that they, they used to give out. And mm -hmm. I had I had that. I think it came with my console, maybe, um, or maybe it came in like a magazine. I, I don't remember where I got it, but I used to love getting demo discs. Like uh, that was so cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean it's cool. Um, the 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 big yeah. thing that they're talking about is they're doing a uh, a trilogy pack for the new the new um, reboot uh, of the Tomb Raider system. Reboot series. Yeah. So. Um, that's cool. I, I, I've never played any of them. Con considering you haven't played any of them, I feel like that's a great. I, I th think like, I have. Way to jump I think in. I have one of them that was free for the PS4 games on PS5. I okay. think I, I do. I think thought I one. That might have been the second. I one. think one Rise of them of the was free. Raider. I don't remember. If, I, I thought so. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, if the collection comes out, I mean, I could easily see that collection being like twenty bucks at Christmas. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> kind of crazy for like three. Huge yeah, games. yeah, I can totally see it. And if not this year, next year. So I mean, that's definitely worth picking up if if you, if I can get it cheap enough. Um, I've yeah. heard they're good. I just I haven't played them, and and I yeah. did enjoy. The I originals. love the first two. So I I enjoyed the like original Tomb games. Raider like for as yeah, as, those old games are fun as clunky too. as it yeah. was. It was still like a lot of fun, at least back then for me. But um, yeah. It was cool. It was definitely cool. Um, they had a bunch of mobile game stuff. Lots of mobile games, um, which, like, I don't know. I don't think feel like we even really have to say anything about them. Um, I thought the Space Invaders thing, like, when I saw that boot up, I didn't know that. I didn't even realize Square owned Space Invaders. <laughs> I was like, yeah. what? I was like, that's cool, but... I think that might be from their new, like, partner company, Taito, yeah, or something. Yeah, Taito. But... Taito's, like, yeah. known for, like, you know the or like some of these original arcade classics that you know and love um mm -hmm. like space invaders <laughs> you know and stuff like that they didn't really show any gameplay for that one but they did say it was gonna be like an ar phone game which could be interesting yeah. well, i'm curious once they actually show um, something you know, bubble bubble is always fun too uh darius is a really good shooter i don't know if you ever played the darius series mm -hmm. it's reminded me of lots of those like our type yeah Darius. exactly it's exactly what it is yeah. um we played this one at magfest it was like a four person sit down cockpit version that was a that lot like of fun no <laughs> like, yeah that was a lot of fun we that sounds like a lot more fun than a film yeah. i want to get into the giant cockpit with friends and blast <laughs> yeah man we, we played that but there was like a line for it we had to like wait to play it it was like the only game oh, that man. i had to wait to play at magfest Rest in peace, Magfest. That's over. <laughs> but uh, they, they are bringing it back. They are. They are. I heard that they've, with they've got like new staff. board members and staff and stuff. Yeah. So that that's we, good. We totally ignored that story. Did we? But... Yeah, I thought we mentioned it. But maybe not. Uh, it, I don't think anyway, so. we don't have to get into it. It's, it's okay. Back. <laughs> it was gone and it's back. And it should be nicer for it. Yeah, so that'll be good. That's, that's the important yep, part. <laughs> for sure. Once it's safe. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, lots of mobile games, bubble bubble, all that. Uh, then they showed the adventures, which I skipped um, it. 
Yeah, <laughs> I skip so much. Unless, I unless you're already trailer. into it, I don't think it's gonna entice anyone new. Um, Let's let me. They show that Black Panther was joining. I think that was the only like new bit of news. Uh, okay. So. Yeah, let, let me be real here. The only thing I really did was scroll through it to see if I saw anything Corona related. <laughs> we know that wasn't gonna happen. <laughs> it was worth looking at though. Uh, that's funny. Yeah, but then they showed uh Balan Wonder World, which I don't know. Sinish picked that up, right? He did pick yeah, that up. I don't know what that's. I heard about. the demo was really bad, and <laughs> I don't think this trailer like changed anyone's opinions. Yeah. So. <laughs> I have no idea what it is. I, I saw that this Life is Strange thing had a like I've never even heard of that before, but it had like a really long part of the direct as well. Yes. So that, that was pretty much the latter end of the direct. Um. Which Life is Strange series is pretty cool. It's a kind of like, kind of similar to the Telltale formula with like a kind of point and click adventure ish games mm -hmm. um, where you're making choices. It, but like the story wise, it's like very ordinary kind of stories mixed with like supernatural elements okay. in each of uh, the seasons. So like the first season, you play as this girl who gets this time travel ability, which is really cool. Um, and the second season, I believe you play as this brother who his younger brother gets this ability to like telekinesis kind of stuff or something. I didn't play season two, so I'm not more as familiar with that one, but, uh, yeah, like I really dug the first game. It was very like original, emotional. The music was really good. I really enjoyed the characters and the story. I wasn't a big fan of the ending per se, but overall it was a really fun experience. Um, so it's definitely gotten a big, bigger following. Um, so I can see why they wanted to focus a little bit on it. Um, and it was cool that they also announced after this third game that their the originals are getting remastered as well, which is cool. Okay. So. Cause it's kind of hard to think that these games came out how many years ago? I was like, what? I've never heard of them. <laughs> but... <laughs> it was a, a while back when Square was starting to do like these new indie games kind of initiative, mm. and this was one of like the very first ones, I think. Gotcha. Uh, but when did the original? I just kind of want to look that up real quick. 2015. Okay. That was six years ago. That's crazy. <laughs> Where, what, where does time go, man? Down the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, originally, originally the Life of Strange games were very uh, structured in an episodic manner, which I think this next one is still going to be, but they decided that it's going to release all at once this time, so you can play it all at once, or you can kind of, like, pace yourself, so... That's cool. Yeah. Um, And then they ended with a closer look at... Project Athea. Uh, Project Athea, yeah, which is now titled Forspoken. It didn't really show much of it other than it has a it has a specific actress, so yeah. And I don't know if that's a red flag or not, but <laughs> you know, you know my take on if if the game is just pushing it, there's a specific actor or actress. Um, it's probably not going to be that good. <laughs> it will have problems. That's yeah. my personal take on that. <laughs> If, if, they, if they push an actor over the gameplay, yeah, I tend to agree, especially after the cyberpunk experience. I told you. So. I told you. As soon as they were like, Keanu Reeves, it was like, this game's going to suck and everyone's going to be really disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, people still love that game, but I don't know if they just, maybe they just got like caught up in the hype. I trust your judgment for I, the most part on a lot of things. and I feel like the people who say they love it still or just trying to justify like, it <laughs> yeah not disappoint themselves yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah i mean i trust your judgment i mean considering you actually beat it and crashed the credits <laughs> so, yeah but what are you gonna do <laughs> so all right well well that wraps up it's midnight yeah, that wraps up uh sony square let's take a quick break come back with the Nintendo rumors and Nintendo news. And, and hopefully go to bed before yeah, one. Yeah, we'll wrap this up <laughs> real quick. Be right back.
we're back. Last break. We're gonna rush through this <laughs> so we don't go to bed. So all if night. there's news that we go through quickly, <laughs> well, and you're like, why do you spend more time? <laughs> Pokemon presents. This was a event that showed a complete montage of the series of Pokemon from 1996. 25 years. Like 25 years. Yeah. Of Pokemon. 96 yeah. all the way to. 2021, 2021 jumping through all the peripherals for like uh the game the trading cards the pokemon had a lot of weird <laughs> accessories man as they showed like game boy camera <laughs> pokemon snap everything like they went through um pedometers, expansion cards stickers and transfer packs and all sorts of stuff so um yeah <laughs> it was it was it was pretty neat little video it was it was very japanese like just the way that it like was presented <laughs> it was very <laughs> like like for that audience i thought but um it was still cool um yeah it was a cool history yeah for sure it, it kind of opened your eyes to like how long and weird this series has grown it's kind of crazy um, honestly when you think about it because like i remember my buddy playing pokemon green in japanese and he didn't know japanese but he knew how to play pokemon in japanese <laughs> and i was like what the hell is this game and then it was like a couple months later everybody had pokemon like <laughs> cards games pikachu was it's, everywhere it's, it's, it's weird because i definitely got into the anime and the card game before the actual game yeah, well, games, the, the so. anime too like i used to watch it yeah. on tv and it was mostly because he wanted to watch it and he was at my house all the time um and it was just one of those things it's like hey we're gonna chill it's like all right put on pokemon all right and i just mess around on my computer and you know <laughs> pokemon would be on the background and then and then i started watching it myself too and and it wasn't that i was like huge into it but it was just like every day i came home i had a snack so i'd just like you know sit on the couch with a snack watch pokemon till it was over because <laughs> it was always on right when i got home it, it was that theme song, let's yeah, be honest. True. <laughs> du, du, du. It's like a rack opera, yeah. man. <laughs> so, um, but let's get into the actual games that they showed. Yeah, sure. <laughs> they showed a little more of new Pokemon Snap, as which, as we mentioned, every time they show more of this game, the more impressive it looks. I can't wait. Yeah, it looks good for this game to come out. My only disappointment is that it comes out at the end of April. I didn't want it sooner, but <laughs> yeah, it looks good. Um, you know, I, I never played the first one, but it definitely looks cool. So. Yeah, it just looks beautiful. Yeah. Like out of all the games that they showed in this direct, that looks the most beautiful, <laughs> which we can get into our takes on what we think of the graphics of these next two. But... <laughs> all right. So next one, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl remakes. Um, yes. I honestly thought it looked fine, um, uh, but again, I've never played the originals, but uh, I personally wanted something more like Let's Go, just because I really enjoyed yeah. playing Let's Go, uh, considering I never beat a Pokemon game before that, and uh, just being able to skip like random fights and all that stuff, seeing the wild Pokemon on the map, and um, I don't know. That, that was that was fun mechanics for me. I enjoyed it. So um, mm -hmm. I, I don't have much to say. I mean, this I since it's not that type of game, um, I don't think I will pick it up at all. Um, yeah. Um, so like I get them being faithful to the original since it's a remake and like each generation of remakes they've done have been very like one to one in a sense just kind of updating the hardware in a sense like what that game was capable of back then to new hardware which was the only thing that kind of like seemed somewhat off-putting to me like compared to like let's go and sword and shield this looks very basic stylistically yeah i mean it looks um, it looks like the like 3ds the, game or the uh yeah. it looks like the ds game I'm just not saying like, like it doesn't look visually more impressive than what the 3DS was, but I feel like they definitely could have pushed it further. The um, thing I don't get, people are comparing it to Link's Awakening, and I was like, no. That like no. Link's Awakening was amazing, and it was also a, a yeah. black and white Game Boy game, so anything if, that if, had if, depth to it was gonna look amazing. <laughs> if they made this uh 
Diamond and Pearl look like Link's Awakening, I would have been impressed then because that <laughs> Link's Awakening is beautiful. Yeah, and this beautiful. is just like it's. Fine. I didn't get why people were saying that because I don't yeah. know. Maybe it's just because like the houses were like I don't know, just the way the houses generate and that like that I think like engine just I don't the know Playmobil like toy like yeah. kind of simplest simplistic look to yeah, it. No, but but no, Link's Awakening. But Link's Awakening is not Playmobil. Yeah. Man, Link's Awakening is like straight up claymation, handcrafted clay <laughs> models, <laughs> yeah. and they like actually like craft everything out. Yeah, like, that looked awesome. There's a difference between those two types of toys. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I don't know if you have anything else to say about that. Um, that's. Uh, yeah, not, not too much. Uh, I guess also people were kind of upset that it's going to be like $60 games. Yeah, and, I mean, that's ex- like, at this point, be, you should expect that. <laughs> like, I don't understand the like, it's like, oh, $60. <laughs> I wanted to play it, but it's $60. It's like, then, then save up to get an extra 20 bucks and buy it, like, when you can. <laughs> like, I don't get it. If you want to play it, then get it and play it. And if you don't like it, the beauty of buying something physical is that you can sell it and get most of your money back, especially if it's a new game. For people who have already played it, like this isn't necessarily for you. Sure. But if you want to, then here's a way to play it on modern systems. And for those who haven't played it, like this is probably an equivalent price that you could find the originals on the ds uh, the originals are they would so expensive today. nowadays i know so like heart gold and soul silver are like a hundred dollar games in that sense. like yeah. ds games yeah and if you compare them side by side this does look like an improvement even if it's not as much as everyone would like yeah so um so that takes us to the next one which i thought looked really cool <laughs> especially not as like a big pokemon <laughs> guy um it's definitely the biggest surprise, to be sure. Yeah, it's, it's basically what everyone has been asking for, and that is a Breath of the Wild-style Pokemon game, which is called Pokemon Legends... Can't pronounce it. What is it? Arceus? 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 I think, I think Arceus. Yeah. It's a legendary Pokemon. Yeah. But yeah, Pokemon Legends. Yeah. Is what they it looks seem cool. to be indicating as a spinoff series. They, they basically showed like a big, open, cel-shaded grassy field with a giant they, mountain they, in the background they, the music and like the camera angles they were definitely like going to emulate that uh breath of the wild yeah vibes. it was really cool <laughs> now like when they i just i, I want to know more about the gameplay before i'm like all in on it um yeah. just because it looked it's this just kind of weird was like basically like a concept like that's what it looked hey, like we're doing it <laughs> that's what it looked like because they just kind of showed like your character run out into a a field, cr- like and throw some crouch Pokeballs. down into the grass, throw a Pokeball, and catch it. And I was like, "All right, that's cool," but like, what else do you do in the game? So I'm, I would definitely want to keep an eye on it. Um, I think that'll be more exciting of a Pokemon game than than mm-hmm. what the series is and has been since it came out. Yeah. So, like, I am definitely somewhat in the same boat. Like. This is a dream concept for me, and I'm very intrigued to see where it goes next. Although, I'm very surprised at what they showed, the state it was in, for what they are hoping to be, what they said in early 2022 game. I'm like, no way. (laughs) This game is not going to... Either you're going to delay the heck out of that, or um, it's going to be a very rough or shallower experience than we would want (laughs) so because i'm not not even talking about like the frame rates or anything like i'm sure that can be smoothed out but like when they threw the pokeball on the the pokemon like there was absolutely zero reaction it was just like bunk i'm like the pokemon didn't even like look or animate or anything it seemed so robotic like (laughs) unsatisfying in that sense yeah um, and it does look like they're still doing turn-based battles, what they showed in later screenshots, which kind of makes me sad. Yeah. Because I was hoping, especially after playing Final Fantasy VII Remake, I want everything to be action RPG <laughs> now. <laughs> so. Yeah. But we'll see. Yeah. They they haven't really shown much, and it's looked very early. So I will hold my opinions until we see more. But Cool. Well, I think that pretty much wraps up the Pokemon Presents that came out. 
Uh, yes. The next thing was the Sakurai Presents, which I never watched, so I'll let you uh, breeze through this one real quick. Yeah, not too much to say, honestly. Um, he b basically showcased Pyra and Mithra, which are kind of like a what used to be Zelda and Sheik kind of character that you swap in and out. So it's gotcha. kind of cool, that kind of mechanic, watching that play out. Um, and it comes with 16 music tracks, if you're interested, which is pretty, pretty hearty. Um, and I guess the more interesting part was, because this helps kind of guesswork what possible future fighters for the remaining two slots might be, they showed the me fighters, which were Monster Hunter and Ghosts and Goblins. So those were the me fighters that were yeah, Arthur. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Which is really is only just like a suit of armor. Yeah. Like there's not really any character to that. Not but... really sure it's like they just took street pass elements and put it into the game yeah. <laughs> into the <Mii> Fighter. <laughs> slap the ghost and goblins label on yep that's sure why not <laughs> yeah um but yeah like i said that's interesting because it kind of helps guess who's next because there was a leak called concert leak recently where someone supposedly leaked a list of all the songs that's going to be in the smash concert once all the dlc is done and it was saying like the last two songs of that concert was going to be crash bandicoot and monster hunter although that kind of lowers the chances now that monster hunter uh me's were yeah selected instead of a fighter so we will see about that um there's also been some recent glitches in Smash Brothers which have been interesting that might indicate some characters. Uh, I'll just briefly go over. And that was, uh, so the glitches are uh, projectiles are like missing or going through uh, hitboxes for characters which would normally, normally otherwise hit them. Um, and there's also a specific glitch with Dark Pit where he shoots his like shadowy arrow and it's getting like stuck on his back. Um, so the two characters that seem most likely that that could be be used as testing for would be either uh, Pokemon Dedusai, which is the evolved form of Rowlet from uh, Pokemon Sun and Moon, um, which might sound weird, like why that Pokemon when he's like last generation, but we forgot to mention with uh, Pokemon Legends, they are reusing three Pokemon starters for that. It's not like new Pokemon or anything. So uh, that could be very timely in that sense as a Pokemon that's still relevant. Um, and he was almost selected originally for Smash Brothers, but instead Incineroar, a little fire line got picked over him. Um, and the reason why he released the glitches is he's an archer kind of pokemon and as well as a grass ghost type so maybe that ghost type could be like why projectiles are going through him so that's why people are thinking um the other theory is it could relate to halo's master chief um and like with the needler gun those kind of projectiles usually stick on the character which like the arrow sticking our dark pit kind of gives off that same vibes maybe that could be what they're testing It'd be cool. And I'd like if Master Chief showed up in Smash. I think Master Chief would be I pretty think it'd cool. Just, be cool. just for the yeah. Master Chief or Crash, just to have like one of the. It would just mean a lot, I think, as far as like how far gaming and like the yeah. whole like. It would definitely be the bigger surprise. I think it'd be really sure. cool just to be like and Crash makes sense just because it's Activision and all the Crash games are on Smash are on uh, like all consoles now anyway. So Smash mm -hmm. would kind of make sense to be in there um yep. master chief would be a, a stretch that'd be a pretty big reach um what's interesting with master chief is uh like the past two years that have been like big microsoft characters to join us uh you had well, we just had steve e3 2019 banjo yep. e3 2020 well technically it was not e3 2020 but if there had been it would have been more than likely minecraft who kind of got pushed back a few months to like september october yeah. so so if that was a pattern maybe they were planning to end with master chief as a final microsoft character i don't maybe. know that'd be cool so well i guess that 
but yeah that's that's pretty much all for that i can really talk about so <laughs> yeah um but let's get to the exciting stuff yeah that bloomberg is reporting a new nintendo switch model is coming this year 2021 there have been rumors forever but the <laughs> fact that bloomberg is now saying this with such specific details yeah i think yeah. yeah, Bloomberg. I think they were the ones that talked about the the Switch, the version two. Before so. and maybe yeah. even the Switch Lite. Mm -hmm. But I think, well, actually, I think the Switch Lite came out because everyone found that because like there was like a case that got leaked, like a case was released on Amazon and everyone was like, hey, "There's a new Switch." <laughs> <laughs> so, um. But yeah, this new model they're saying is a 7-inch screen, which is like uh, 0.8 inches larger, which is basically the bezel around the screen, um, yeah. which is pretty cool. And then um, 720p handheld still, but it's an OLED screen, which is, you know, less power and more vibrant. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. It'll still look better in handheld for It'll, sure because that's OLED. If, yeah. if they do edge to edge, it's going to look really smooth. Like it's just going to look yeah. like a, a more high end device going edge to edge. Um, and then the ability to output 4K when docked, which I find interesting. Definitely. I find that interesting <laughs> because I don't know, like I want to know more details on that if, if you need a new dock. Or if it'll just somehow the existing docks will be able to support that. Because if I buy a new one and get another dock, that'd be huge. <laughs> that'd be sweet. <laughs> yeah, like I, I wonder if you would be able to even like dock this in the old dock at all. Or yeah, if it wouldn't like be compatible. I mean, it depends. Because like, honestly, I don't feel like they're going to be able to move. They're not going to be able to move from the form factor because of Joy-Cons. Yeah like one because of joy cons yeah unless um, they I, I also feel like they're keep the screen the same size or like the unit itself the same size of the screen can obviously be bigger because of the bezel room yeah. but uh because of nintendo labo if you think about that i don't know if that'd be a deciding factor but if they want that to still be usable it would still have to fit within those unless they have like all new labo sheets yeah i mean i don't <laughs> yeah honestly like i don't feel like they're they've done much with labo since like initially announcing it <laughs> but yeah i don't think that's the selling like deciding factor but honestly I, it might, it might make something it, they consider it might make it better because labo like yeah. isn't the best experience but if it's a better if it's a you know a better screen same resolution but if it's you know it might it might run better i don't know mm -hmm. um so you know i don't know how much better it's gonna get it's just a piece of cardboard with a lens in it but <laughs> I was most curious if, well, they don't really specify if this is getting any kind of like performance boost besides resolution. I expect it would be probably a little more powerful. Well, if it's putting 4K out docked, it's definitely going to be more more powerful because like some yeah. stuff struggles to do 1080 out now, like, <laughs> um, or even but I'm, like I'm hoping it'll at least be like most stuff's 900 more powerful for like like more stable frame rates and things like yeah. that and that for for older games and that kind of like you know people have, have been talking about it like breath of the wild 2 is going to be a launch title for it and that would make sense because if they're using the same engine breath of the wild was running and they're mm -hmm. able to get this more powerful chipset because i know i'm pretty sure like nvidia discontinued the chipset that that the switch is running I think I heard that as well. So yeah. it would make sense if they're getting this new, more powerful chipset with, you know, it'll have better battery life or the same battery life running at a higher, you know, clock rate. Um, you know, maybe they they do Breath of the Wild 2 with the same engine and then you don't have those frame drops that everybody was, you know, especially when you run into a forest or something like that. The, the Korok Woods, oh my yeah. gosh, yeah. So <laughs> so maybe that fixes it. Maybe that's that's the thing. So um, I'm excited. I, I want a new Switch. I mean, my Switch is perfectly fine. I have no issues with my Switch at all. Um, mm -hmm. No Joy-Con issues, no battery issues, no fan issues. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I'm down for an upgrade. But I still want it. I do, because <laughs> I want to 
mod oh, that's my right, original you. one. <laughs> yes. But I'm not going to do that until it's no longer my primary console because I don't want to <laughs> risk breaking it. Or I'll sell it to somebody because, like, those things are still commanding, like, those are still commanding, like, retail almost. Yeah. Like, the version ones because they cannot be patched, which is pretty awesome, so keep that in mind too when you go to sell you might not want to trade it in you might want to to sell it on facebook or something it's good and good and keep in mind yeah, yeah. so um it's exciting I, I don't know if it's gonna come out this year though i don't know i mean it makes it would be cool but i think i think the only way it th there's it it'll it'll be interesting to see what they do as far as how um the user base um isn't split or if it is split like depending on how they how they do that if it's just like hey these run on your normal switch but they run better on the new switch <laughs> or yeah. if it's just gonna be like only available on new nintendo switch i feel like nintendo at least initially will still try to support both and probably be like plays better on yeah whatever the new model is but I can see maybe down the road that they might experiment with some like exclusives or something, especially since I think I think more so third parties might want to take advantage. Yeah, for sure. Because there are definitely games I feel like are being passed over because absolutely the current Switch can't handle and maybe it. Maybe we'll and... get like actual ports from EA for their freaking sports games, like something mm -hmm. that's the real version instead of this like watered down yeah. roster update from an xbox 360 game so in that sense i feel like nintendo might have to start splitting sh splitting just to show that they're not one-sided in that sense they're like i think they might have to play both sides of the fence yeah. in that sense it's, it's so. hard when it comes to mobile hardware like you know, things are just going to get yeah. better with time, but things go, you know, things progress rapidly in the mobile space. I mean, look yeah. at your phones. I mean, you can buy a phone two years ago and it's, you know, runs like <laughs> now <laughs> compared. I'm, I'm, I'm curious, like, if Nintendo is going to reevaluate, like, their console handheld plans now if they're going to go more like a mobile route where they kind of release iterations or like i can't even imagine what's after switch like it's it's almost impossible to imagine yeah i mean i i, I don't think it makes sense to to do an offshoot handheld anymore um yeah. because now like they focus on you know the switch you can make it either or you can make it your primary handheld or you can make it your primary console yeah. and then with that you get the bonus of either or unless you just got the light so maybe this is like maybe this is going to be the non handheld switch that they're going to release or something but if it's got a, <laughs> but if it's got a bigger screen then obviously it's going to be handheld but yeah um but I don't just know. That, that concept is like it's amazing i don't know it, how they can top it like, yeah. I don't think if, if it's like they've achieved unless they like go like full like virtual reality or something. But until then, this is like the switch is perfect. Yeah, like the only thing I could see them maybe doing would be like, here's a handheld model. Here's a home console model and they play the same games. But at that just so they have like, but what do you gain from that? You don't gain anything from that. It doesn't, it doesn't exactly, make sense. Like, so. And, like, you can't really compete with, like, PlayStation and Xbox anymore at that yeah. point. Like, this is your niche that you've carved. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm looking yeah. forward for a new one. I'm, I'm really curious to see what they do. Um, hopefully we get an announcement after March 31st <laughs> when the fiscal year ends. Yes, I am very hopeful and confident that something something will yeah. be announced after that date yeah maybe so. some more zelda news along with that so i'm not sure how soon we'll get zelda news since skyward is slated in july but i'm sure we'll get some zelda news before then yeah we're gonna get a the zelda um 
Nintendo Switch Online. I'm, 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 I'm guessing maybe by like May or June we'll get that full Zelda 35th like news that we want. Let's see <laughs> if that console's coming out this year. If it's coming out this year, we'll know about it um, around June. We would have sure. to because like PS5. And I stuff, feel I feel that, like that we'll like know September. that existence of that console between sometime between April and June. Yeah. And if we hear nothing, then it's not coming out this yeah. year. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, so yeah, that that should be. Although, I mean, we didn't get a release date. I mean, we knew about the PS5, but they didn't even give us a release date until September, and then it came true. out in November. <laughs> so so that is so true. So, I guess anything's possible anything's these possible. days, and people are still <laughs> trying to get those things. Um, but yeah, that that marks four years of the switch coming up this month uh we actually just we yeah. actually just passed it we, we passed the just date. passed yeah. the date i actually saw some facebook memories from the switch event that we went to which was <laughs> which was awesome i mean that right there was the reason why i went out and got my red and blue joy con you know system which they are actually sitting here in pieces because i decased the uh because i decased the uh the console and did my my d-pad version with the snes controllers but um, nice. Now that event was fun. Um, I was I was excited to to be able to see the console before it came out. I haven't been able to do anything like that in a really long time, um, and it got me all console hyped. And <laughs> we we went out, camped out, grabbed it, watched the hockey game on my phone, played some Luigi's Mansion. It's good stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> good stuff. Uh. But like you said, Those it's, were... it's perfect, man. The uh, the switches, it's like, well, perfect in the sense of like, it's everything I wanted from a game console. Mm -hmm. You know, like, it's got... That's probably still my favorite thing about the system now is the versatility of the system. Like, being able to play on my TV and like, when I want to play in bed, just lifting and playing in bed. Yeah, it's just like... that right there for me is like exactly what I do, like... I can, yeah. you know, I can go keep my wife company or, you know, be around my kids <laughs> while playing still and not just be Or, or the fact that, like, now that more of my family has the Switch, being able to, like, take my system over and just, like, plop it into their dock and we, yeah. we can start playing just like that is, like, so easy, so yeah. awesome. And just, like, and, like, stopping in the middle of the game. Just put mm -hmm. it to sleep and walk away, and then it's right back where you were. Like I don't quite have that same magic as, like, because that was a magical moment when I first started playing with Zelda and like coming home from work, turning it on, and being exactly where I left off was so great. Uh, now that I have games like Animal Crossing and Rain Fit, where I have to keep going to the home screen. Yeah, yeah. Not that I hate those. Ga I love those games, but it, it kind of sucked away a little bit of that magic to the fact that I have to keep switching. So. <laughs> yeah, no, but. But that is. It's huge that, though, like that, what you're describing. Any game that you're playing, I mean, even like Super Nintendo Online or like any of the like NES Online, you can do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Just hit the power button, put it to sleep, come back, pick it right back up, and there you are you just open it up you're playing you're... in less than three clicks of a button yep. it's it's really awesome that's like one of my favorite things yeah. about it so <laughs> well we'll see um we'll see what we get i want zelda i want metroid what the future holds. yeah I, I think i think i'm most excited for metroid surprisingly only because it's been such a long time and I haven't seen anything from Retro Studios in like forever, <laughs> and so that combination, like, yeah, that'll be cool. This, this would actually be the first Metroid Prime or like Metroid-ish game. I don't think it wasn't anything on Wii U. Yeah, this would be the first Metroid game in HD. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it would. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, it's pretty nuts. It will, it will look gorgeous, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can you can get like you can play the gamecube one in that that did technically support progressive scan hd mm -hmm. 480p you, but you're saying 
a GameCube. Yeah, game. no, I know, but but I mean, it looked good. Um, it looks uh, it looks gorgeous. But, That's the crazy. But part. yeah, um, seeing it in like full it looks full res 1080p for GameCube. With... Imagine how gorgeous it will look by today's. Yeah, like, for sure. I mean, that game came out like, in 2002. Capabilities. <laughs> that game's almost 20 years old. <laughs> like it's oh my crazy. Gosh. So that that that's why I'm like so psyched for that. Yeah. I, just my imagination could run wild. Yeah, I'm excited for like, that. I'm, for sure. I'm stoked for Breath of the Wild too, but I have like expectations there. Yeah. This was just like you just want to see it. You don't even care. The game could suck, but yeah. you're just like, ooh, I want to get into it. <laughs> but yeah, that's that that about does it. I think. Um, yeah, four years, and we'll see what happens with. You know, the next iteration of it. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> sure. All right. Well, I guess we should wrap this yeah, up. Let's wrap this up. Cause... I've got a, an early morning tomorrow. Oh, boy. But it's okay. It's the weekend. <laughs> I just have to. I don't have anything until nine. So I have some time to sleep in. But <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we will record again probably I, I would assume we're gonna get an announcement in like the next week or two after this fiscal year ends yeah uh, just because there's so many unknowns with mario getting yanked from the stores and the online game getting pulled and the official end of the year of mario um i'm sure <laughs> we're gonna get something yeah. so and if nintendo does not announce mother three by then <laughs> I'm going to make that my next stream, okay? We're going to play it. That's what we're going to play next. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Well, I'm ready. So. I'm ready to play it. I've got it on my Wii U. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, until then, guys, we'll see you as we'll see you in our next recording. Stay safe. <laughs> Happy gaming, everyone. And yeah, we'll catch you guys next time. <laughs>